Hello and welcome to Florian Models Kit View Time. Today we've actually got Hobby Boss's 148 scale F111 DE Aardvark. Now this isn't a particularly new kit, it has been around for a little bit now, but actually is it's its best in scale. As in, if you're gonna have one, this is the one you wanna go for because it's got all the interesting bits. And to be honest, some of the older ones are mm, a little bit icky, shall we say, all right? So this is a very master kit. There is a few different versions of this one out here of the actual Aardvark. Again, this is the DE version, and it comes with the sort of upper Hayford uh, markings. You can see lovely bit of Oxford, uh, box art on there, that classic jet. And then down on here, we've actually got what it's about. So down here, it's the Heartbreakers, okay? And then we've got the actual uh, Tiger's head with that very nice uh, Tiger camo uh, on the tail for obviously one of the Tiger meets uh, from 1991. So again, very nice things down in there. Your kit number for this one. As you can see, it's 80350. All right, and then we've got a little bit under there just showing you your colorings. That standard uh, European one camo uh, with the dark green, mid green, and then the sort of the buff sand color uh, in amongst it, or some people call it brown, whichever way you want to call it. And then the underside showing off the black and everything else like that. This is actually a very strong heavy box okay quite a lot of plastic in here as you can see straight off looking down in here you can see it's absolutely rammed again i've had this kit probably around about five or six years but you can see i've never even reviewed it weirdly so if we delve deep into this lot we should come up with or i hope we are if we just pop this over here I'm grab the parts down in there so starting off with the instructions that usual way there isn't much to it it is going to be a pull out type sheet so usual thing a little bit about it you know and all the things and then unusually it say shows its age of this actual kit but actually uh, it's very nicely laid out we've got the usual things down to that cockpit area putting in all those areas just like that and then obviously the seats going in instrument panel it's full decals for all the instruments uh, if you wanted to go down that way and then we've got the entire front end of it going in so the usual way the cockpit it comes in from down below and then we've actually got the windscreen fitted on the top that center bar being fitted in and then if you wanted to you could have the canopy open or closed technically i think like most of us you'd have it closed for the moment until you finish painting work so actually what you can do is use the other one if you wanted to to use as a mask almost for popping it down there but you say you do get the do different types down in there if you wanted to do that so that's actually quite a nice touch another nice touch with this kit is obviously we get full radar okay so again we've got all the details down in there wouldn't take too much just to liven that up with a little bit of wire things like that okay and then you're over to into here you can see you've got the gear going through. So this is the nose gear, that strong old nose gear that they actually have. And then we've actually got the, the mid bay going right the way through, putting that one in if you want to do the weapons bay just like that, okay? And then we've got that really unusual uh, undercarriage system for the main gear. And the way that that retracts and comes in and everything else is actually a feat of engineering on its own. But there we go, that's that one down in there. Sits very squat and heavy. Then the, one of the nice touches with this kit is this. This is, actually has a full um, slats and flaps deployed which is quite nice because the f111 powered down does tend to have it all hanging out so that's quite a nice touch and you've got the spoilers for on top of the wings as well and again there is that front leading edge slat so you can have it closed or deployed is whichever way you want okay so some nice details and it gives that nice look to the f111 as you can imagine exactly the same on the other side then on to the back one it's quite a straightforward build on this one you can see we've got some of the weapons fits going down in there together just like that okay hold on we're missing part of the instructions there we go that's where they are i'm just starting thinking hello we're missing a bit here so step four it's two pull out sheets okay so let's just open that up a little bit so there we go that's what we were missing. I was beginning to panic there. Okay, so we have got beautiful full engine detail. Again, wouldn't take much to actually liven this one up and add a little bit more to it if you wanted to. So there we go. That is that full engine detail going right the way through. Okay, and then obviously we've got um, the actual uh, electronics type areas down in the front and then obviously fitting those in. And again, electronics bays, both sides of it as well to go through. So it does give you a very heavily detailed um, F111 as well right out of the back. Then it's a case of putting it all together. So we've actually got um, 
the nose wheel well and the electronics bay, things like that, all being fitted in. And then obviously you've got the radar going in and that mid bomb bay being fitted into that one, just like that. Then over onto the other side, it's time to close it all up. So as you can see, we've got the tail sections going in. We've got these little bags, uh, which is uh, stops the airflow getting inside the wings, things like that. They're sort of, I think they're pneumatic on these. They blow up and down as they close forward and back. And then obviously you've got the top part going down, which is nice so we don't have any center seams or anything else, is gonna drop down and sandwich that all together, okay? Then you've actually got this guy down on here, which if I remember is the GPS tracking system um, and uh, receiver okay down on there again depends if you want to have that version or not not all of them have them obviously it's only the later ones and then attaching the forward fuselage down onto the main fuselage section and then you've got that top part with the cockpit in it as we know drops down on the top and then obviously you can click in the nose there isn't actually a way of swinging this open without making it yourself which is a little bit old because you'd actually want that on a swing system so you can see all that nice radar detail down on there uh, cooling scoops for the avionics bay uh, and things like that being obviously putting in down there and then some lumps and bumps for aerials and things and then tail being fitted in there the big old nozzles down there in there in the back as you can imagine and then it's a case of fitting the actual intakes a little bit of care to be taken as we put in those in and then obviously we've got uh, the areas going down the sides over the top of the actual wing section we've got an arrestor hook main gear being fitted and then obviously the pylons to the wings we've got the um uh, ventral fins being put down there at the back and then obviously the doors and everything to close everything up on this and then depending on the version you're doing you've actually got the paveway um, laser designator pod um, going to be fitted in or you can just have the bomb bay open depending which one it is a lot of people tend to forget the f-111 actually has a bomb bay okay then all the weapons as we just saw just then being fitted through just like that okay and then takes us to step five the actual weapons fit how you want to put them out and then use your thing you got the blurby things in there like that as you can see it's actually a full-on kit and considering the age of this kit again it said it's probably 10 years old now really got a lot of detail going for it. it's got a lot of things okay then we've got what we call and actually they've changed it i was just about to call out one little thing we call it the knees and the boobs um on the f111 and they've changed it slightly uh, the actual markings on it. Uh, it always used to be that down in here when you looked at it for the camo you could do the knees, this was known as the knees and then you'd have the boobs and it was the way that the camo pattern worked but actually they're not showing it on this one they've adjusted it slightly okay but anyway markings as we can see we've got down here for the heartbreakers that usual sort of euro one camo scheme on there really nice indeed and then down there on the top we've got all the various colors and the call outs and everything as you can imagine down there on the weapons and on the back here we've got the tiger heads as well for the tiger meat with that gorgeous full color tail if you wanted to go down that route and then again some of the more tactical weapons on this so we've got laser guided bombs uh, and things like that being fitted onto this one as well so again some nice colorful markings down in here we've got the decals and the various things let's have a quick look see down in here making sure they're all still good even after all these years and they are so as you can see beautiful stencil sheet no problem at all with that and the nice thing is we've got these are the actual taped areas around the actual cockpit for the actual uh, mask or the gasket if you like that runs around the actual uh, framing system that isn't too bad now on the close-up you can see they're not solid it's just the outer there's minimal carrier film so that'd be a nice touch with that and then depending on which one you're doing you've actually got the uh, the yellow or the actual red for the in-flight refueling area we've got some nice markings up here as well for it and as you can see right the way through again this is a little bit lacking down in here but as I think we'll agree you can go out and get a color photo etch set which looks a million times better than that for literally just £10 so it's a really a worthwhile um, sort of upgrade to the kit loads of no steps and no walkways as you might expect and they have spelt them correct in the good old days of Trumpeter and Hobby Boss. They used to have a few problems with spelling errors, shall we say. And occasionally they would say, well, it wasn't no step and things. It was step no and various things. But looks like they corrected that problem. Then we got some gorgeous nose art, as we were saying. I think it was the Heartbreaker one that had this. No, it's Tiger Head's one. So down in here, as you can see, you've got the Tiger Head one printed as a separate. Really nice done with that one. Okay, put that back in there, and then this guy down in here. We've got the weapons. So this is your one for your weapons and your various parts down there, as you can imagine, uh, for doing those. Okay, so they're very nice indeed. 
nice to see the decals are still fine. Okay, so the kit. Um, I'll go through it as it's shown here, I think. Again, absolute stuffed full of plastic. You do get a lot of plastic in this particular kit. So let me stick that over there, get them out of the way. So as you can see, big old sprue with the wing section. Again, this is slightly earlier Hobby Boss. It's not quite into the realm of Trumpeter's early days with the famous uh, Trumpeter Riveter and things like that. But as you can probably see down in here, we do have full recessed riveting. Actually, isn't too bad at all. Very clean, precise, crisp, no problem with those whatsoever. And the underside down for the pylons and things like that down on there. As you can see, they're all opened up, which is a little bit of a thing because perhaps you don't want to open them all up because obviously some of the F111s didn't carry three pylons. Okay, but again, a nice little touch down on there. Pretty much blanks uh, on the inside of the actual uh, nose wheel door and things like that. There's not a lot of detail going down on those, but as I said, it's early days in this thing. But generally, very nice, clean, sharp, no problem at all there. This is the mid Bombay, and again, quite nice touches on this. As you can see, we've actually got, uh, looking across it, you can see full detailed, riveted, no eject pins or anything else, as you can imagine. And then the details keep coming as you make your way through all these areas. Side walls are the actual Bombay, again, fully recessed details and things like that. And then there's the bottom ventral strikes, or strikes, uh, down on there like that. So that's all good, no problem at all. Here we have the slats, okay, so <clears throat> down on the front slats, again, no problem. I think we're missing maybe a little bit of riveting on these, and to be honest with you, we do have a little bit of sink marks just on the leading edge. Oh, catch the top close cam, can catch that one. You can see a little bit of sinkage in there. That's these bars being fitted in, as we know, if they're removed from the mold a little bit quick, sometimes you get a bit of a cool down but generally that's okay. Nice good working mechanism, nice and strong, no problem with that at all. The ejector pins are all sunk down, a little bit of raised on this guy just here, maybe just making sure you take those out before you attempt to glue it together and again with this one over here you can see it's quite pronounced to say the least, okay? So you're going to need to knock those out before you have a go at it. Okay, so forward fuselage. Okay, so generally looking at the sprues, you can see plenty of stuff going down on here, very nicely detailed. So I think if we do the side. Now these are the bays, they actually come in, so you're going to put the, the objects in from the outside going in to fill those up, so quite a nice touch with those, all right? And then generally looking around it, the details do seem to be all there, nice recessed details, everything right the way through. And then looking up, we've actually got those intake shot cones down on there and then obviously we've got various lumps bumps and items for those uh, covers uh, and stuff as you go through the nose itself seems to be good on profile no problem we don't have a center seam or anything floating through that the top cockpit you can see all the gorgeous rivet detail on the top looks very very nice indeed okay and then right down on the sides of those looks absolutely great no problem at all on the blind side Pretty good, we don't have any ejector pin marks. These are the actual the catches for those nose. So again, a little bit of detail. Again, probably needs a little bit of riveting work in there just to liven it up, but that's not too much of a job just to bring that up to speed. But generally, that is very, very nice indeed. Okay, so now we're into the big packs of stuff. As I said, this kit is quite a big kit, as in parts. It's got quite a lot of it going on, as you can see. So. Very nice with all of this, no problems at all. Actually, that all looks really nice. Very, very good indeed. So if we slip down on here, as you can see down here, the riveting detail, this is between the jet pipes at the back, the actual nozzles at the back, really nice detail. And again, good surface detail down here uh, for the actual uh, the bags. Okay, bomb base, various tools and strakes and various things. Again, we've got these guys. I don't know if they were flare and chaff buckets down at the back. I don't know where they were on the F111. Okay, maybe those down on there. And again, gear parts, very nicely done all the way through. And again, this is a blank. If you wanted the Bombay door completely just sealed off and closed, you could use this one. If you wanted it in the open position, then obviously you'd use these here and then these as well. But yeah, very nice indeed. 
Tailplanes, again, beautifully done. Loads of detail, you can see that in the light there. Fantastic detail on all of these parts. Again, it's a little bit old school, uh, as in the riveting and everything else, but it'll take a wash very nicely. You can see there on the close-up how good it is. And these pylons, all the parts for the gear, no problem with those at all. And again, the other pylons, very clean, crisp detailing on all of those. Actually, they're all very, very nice. And again, even on the blind side, these static dischargers, you probably want to take a little bit of care with that you don't snap them off, okay? But they look to be pretty good. No problem with that at all. Good, clean molding everywhere on that. So that's nice. Okay, the engines. We'll just get one of these out if we can. And then if it will allow that, there we go. So the engines themselves, as you can see, really quite nice really good place to start with beautiful detail with these things the afterburner ring things down in here and then obviously we've got the the fan nozzles actually there's really nice detail on that that's actually a little bit surprising i didn't think it's going to be quite as nice as that and then obviously we've got the intake for the actual compressor uh, fan it's work as well so actually very very nicely done some nice details on that again it's one of those things it lends itself particularly well for a little bit of aftermarket work and then obviously going through and super detailing opening it up you can imagine that being a diorama slick fuel tanks we won't bother getting those out we've seen things like that before nicely done maybe the panel lining is a little bit heavy but generally no problems with those at all uh, okay so as we said before there is different versions of this kit out there. We actually have a couple of versions. One of the ones we're talking about is obviously because we've got different instrument panels for different uh, ones that are going to be coming along. So as you can see down the bottom there, we do have four types. So you'd be doing the one that's specific to you. Okay, so that's pretty good. No problem again. These aren't actually the rudder pedals. Oh no, these are actually go down the back. Okay, between the actual the nozzles and the outer nozzle so you've got i think this is the mid one and then down back but the nozzles these go on the outside where the tail planes are things like that again nicely detailed we've actually got the slime line maybe molded a little bit high if we're honest i might want to take a couple of swipes of the sanding stick with that just to knock the depth of that slime line back a little bit but again very nice detail you can see there in the surface detail pretty good again these static discharges i can just imagine them being lost purely before you even get the primer or it would with me doing it and it is a shame to be honest that the actual rudder is fixed uh in the one position would have been nice to have a little bit poseable things you have got flaps and things just i always think nice thing with an aircraft it's sat there just deflect the rudder it just gives a better line to everything it gives that look of movement and stuff uh which i absolutely love okay so we've got some of the weaponry things down here or in this case jammer pods so we've got the very old types of jammer uh, down on the bottom forgive me i can't remember what they are now and then we've got sort of you know the mid-age one and then the newer types of jammer pods down on those like that so again full company of weapons okay so down in here we have a huge sprue full of detail so down in here you've got everything from the cockpit so if we start over here we've got the cockpit sections down in here this is subframing various parts as you say we've got bulkheads uh, as we make our way through we've got the actual radar housing this is for the front wheel well which has got the electronics bits and pieces in it as well we've got the flight sticks uh, pitot tubes things like that gear detail huge real uh, raised rivet details on that and then over here on this side uh, you can see we've got the actual radar itself, all the lumps, bumps and pedals. We've got the rudder pedals down in here. We've got the other areas inside the speed brake, all these types of areas, various things as you make your way up. And again, this guy down in here, which obviously it's the speed brake slash um, uh, uh, wheel well system uh, for the main gear. As you can see, it's got a couple of jet pins, but they're going to be covered. So don't worry about those. And then you've actually got nice, thick, recessed details for what it actually has in that base. So that's no problem with it at all. And again, all the ejector pins, considering its age, are quite shallow. Over here, we've got the circuit breaker wall behind the pilots, things like that. Again, that's pretty good. No problem with that. Okay, I say the kit that really, really does keep giving. I, you know, as I said, I've had this set my stash for 10 years, never looked at it, and now it's like crikey. Okay, so uh, as you can see, plenty going on on this particular sprue. Very nice jobs all around, no problem. Again, minimal burring and everything, considering the age of the kit. I know I keep saying it, but it's really actually very nice. So, electronics areas, we've got both of these for one side. 
again, crude detail, but actually I'm thinking adding a little bit of wiring, things like that in there, you could turn that into something just a little bit um, uh, fantastic. Down here we've got the PAVE spike, is it? PAVE, wait, I can never remember what it is. Uh, system for the designator, which is that recess pod we've got just on here. And then obviously working our way up through the parts, as you can imagine, we've got lumps, bumps, things like that. Until we get to the top up here, we've actually got separate wheel hubs right the way through and then over on here we've actually got the nozzles as you can see down on these and then we've actually got the inner part of the nozzle and then on this side we've got more future or further i should say electronics bumps uh, for down there in the nose so actually pretty much full on in there then we have and i'm not going to get these out because we've seen them before these are generic uh hobby boss uh, type thing. So we've got two sprues of this down in here. So we've got very nice. We've got CBUs as in cluster bomb units. We've got sidewinders, although to be honest, it's the older types down in here. We've got uh, multiple ejector racks on here as well. So we've got some mirrors. Then we've actually got um, uh, laser, uh, sorry, GBU bombs. So we've got satellite guided or GPS guided bombs. And then your standard sort of slick Mark 82s down there as well. Again, two full big bags of that. And I say the weapons keep coming on this. We've got huge, big bunker buster bombs uh, over here. Um, and yeah, we've got walleyes, we've got harm missiles, I think, so harpoon missiles, you name it. We've got a plethora. And again, if I had known I had some of these, I wouldn't have bought aftermarket weapon sets because some of these are actually very nice indeed. So definitely something for your spares box because obviously you're not going to use it all, but they're always handy. I know people moan about it, but they are always handy. Right, the other thing you do get in there is a box. Okay, so we've got this beautiful box like this. And then it's not taped, is it? Okay, so I can get him. Okay, so in the box we have, that's handy because I was beginning to panic. We do have the upper fuselage part. Big old part with this one. And again, catch it in the light. You can see gorgeous details right the way through this one. Very, very nice indeed. No problem with that whatsoever. Actually, really, really nice on that. I don't know if it's got a date. No, I haven't got a date. But again, that's very good indeed. We've got rubber wheels. Again, not too bad ones. Slightly hollowed as well, so you could actually add some flat spots. I don't know about these O-rings. Oh, sorry, front tyres. They look like O-rings to me. Okay, pretty good. And then... Underneath here, we have the, the bottom fuselage. Okay, and there we go. That's actually very, very nice. I was expecting to have a big line. There is a small one here, but it's very faint because of its age. So no problem with that at all. Again, the only thing I would probably do, these slime lines, they're not as pronounced as they've got them here. You'd want to rub them down, but that is literally just a couple of swipes with a sanding stick. No problem. So if you're wondering about it, this then would pop a bomb here. Something like all that, okay, to give you the, the body of it. Again, she's completely well designed the way it goes. I love the way that that's in there. That means no center seams, no problems, no nothing. A little bit of texture on these. Pretty good with both of those. Okay, so last up. In this mammoth we have, I'm not going to get these out because these are running around loose in here. So some of these are seeker heads and things like that for some of the actual uh, radar uh, and uh, satellite sort of and laser guided bombs, things like that. They're all in there as well. But we will open up this just to see the clarity of the canopies. Again, we were talking about you get the, the one piece canopy, which obviously if you want it just closed and the two piece. And Hobby Boss have always been since day one, and you can see it there, how clear they are. They are beautifully clear, the parts. So no problems at all with that. That's really very, very nice indeed. And there we go. That is the Hobby Boss F111E Aardvark, or D, whichever version you want to do. I have to say, it's a beautiful looking aircraft. Definitely very, very iconic aircraft, especially from my day sort of growing up in the 70s, 80s, this one, this was the Libyan Raider, things like that. Uh, and then obviously down in the actual first Gulf War as well. It's just one of those iconic aircraft. The kit itself actually 
is a lot better than I ever thought. I haven't reviewed it. I haven't properly gone through this kit yet. It's sat in my stash for over 10 years. Um, and it's only because, to be honest, it's come up for sale again now. And it's something we're carrying with um, uh, P&M models. I thought, oh, I'll have a look in the kit. So uh, I'll be reporting back that actually, this is actually very nice, a lot better than I ever thought. Personally, I think you're going to have to do a little bit of work on the cockpit. I would probably go down the route, maybe a couple of aftermarket resin ejection seats because you are going to see it if you've got it open and put in a colour photo etched cockpit. There is plenty of aftermarket available for these. They have been around a while. Eddard's got it pretty well covered and got your back on this one. So if you just did want to update it, you can. There is other versions of the actual Aardvark out there as well. Um, I think they do the, the later versions as we've seen. There's plenty of cockpits and everything else like that. The only one I'm not sure they ever got around to releasing was the Sparkvark, which was the actual uh, electronic countermeasures version of the F111 also known as the Raven um, I don't know if they actually released that one I'm hoping they did I just don't remember them actually doing it so anyway that is Hobby Boss's 148 scale F111 DE hardback <laughs>